Welcome, guys, to the first episode of the Mulligans and Milkshakes podcast presented by Crimson Crossover. Crimson Crossover is no longer just an Alabama basketball podcast. Um, we're starting this out as a, a professional golf, Alabama golf, PGA Tour golf type of podcast to, to be able to discuss all things um, golf related. Um, I'm joined by Charles Branch, who you guys already know from the Crimson Crossover podcast and a uh, new host of the for the Crimson Crossover family, Matthew Travis, how are you guys doing today? Doing well, Christian. Excited to uh, start the Mulligans and Milkshakes podcast. I don't have a milkshake with me. I believe Charles might, but yeah, no milkshake for me this morning. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to our first episode. So, so guys, um, we're both we're all three avid golfers. Um, love just the game. I I've been following for for years. Um, I'm a terrible golfer. Matthew can attest to this. He's he's played with me quite a few times. Uh, but uh, let's let's talk intros. How, how you guys got into golf? Maybe uh, your love for the game, and maybe potentially where you guys are at, if you want, as far as either handicap or your golf game currently. Well, I've been playing golf. I'm originally from New York. I've been playing golf since I was five, six years old. Started taking it more seriously in high school. Now I'm playing two, three times a week. I'm just under a three handicap right now i'm trying to get down to trying to get down to scratch but i've been hovering between the two and three and a half range for the past year so the journey to scratch is uh not an easy one but we're but we're getting there that's awesome uh i charles branch i play golf a lot throughout my life um honestly though when i got to college and and just out of college hadn't been playing a ton but have been reinvigorated I really enjoy going out there and walking 18 holes. Um, I, I have no problems playing with people, but just the opportunity to get out there and, and just, you know, play the game and that it's, it's all, it's in my hands. Um, and just the, you know, you, you can play as y'all probably attest, you can play around and, it, you know, each shot is different every day as far as distance and pin placement and every and everything like that um i am definitely one who's not a good golfer my my handicap hovers around the 15 to 16 range right now but steadily improving um you know the worst part of my game is the short game you know chipping and putting and the game that i practice the part of my game that i practice the least is chipping and putting so you know that's how it works out but um you know, having having my two sons uh, that are getting that age that they, they love getting out there with their clubs. And I, I call it just hockey sticking it from the from the dry from the tee box all the way to the putty green. Um, that that's been a lot of fun. But I, I also try to get out there at least once or, or twice a week and get 18 holes in and just really having fun being being back out there and uh, just kind of testing myself each day and knowing that as I get to an older age, this is a sport that I can continue to play until as, as Nick Saban would say, I'm dead and buried and gone, gone. We already got an Alabama football reference on, a, <laughs> on the podcast, man. We're starting early. Well, um, he's, you know, he's transitioned to golf too. So, you know, f- future guests maybe. Potentially. For, for, for potentially, anybody that's uh, listening, you know, wants to connect us, come on. Um, well, if you guys don't know, I'm Christian Sykes. Uh, I'm probably the worst golfer out of the three. I also golf the wrong way, meaning I'm left-handed. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> makes it difficult sometimes to to take uh advice from people but um yeah no I'm I'm probably around 20 to 25 depending on the day as far as a handicap is concerned um the issue with my game is it's not consistent uh one day I it's always it's always I'm good at one thing during a round so like some days I'm really good at off the tee um other days I'm like I played 2 weeks ago or technically 2 rounds ago not 2 weeks ago and I mean, my chipping was like, I I couldn't have, I would, I literally have never chipped that well in my life before. Uh, I remember one time there was, I was going off a hill. I hit it into the rough. It rolled out going down slope, like five feet from the hole. And someone's like, if you gave that, if you gave that chip to you a hundred times, you're not hitting that shot ever again. Um, and that's the issue is it probably took me five shots to get there. So, um, that's probably my biggest inconsistency as far as golf is just not being consistent. Um, but I go out with my wife probably every other week when it's not basketball season. Um, fortunately, basketball season's in the winter time, which it means it's cold. But um, probably every other week with my wife, and we just go out and have a good time. Um, 
and I love going to tournaments. Uh, I've been to, I think, six or seven now, uh, a few majors, um, a President's Cup, uh, different uh, Wells Fargo events, obviously based in Charlotte. Um, and, man, I just love the game of golf, love talking about it, and uh, just just love watching it. So uh, excited to get this journey going with you guys. Us, me too. Right there with you guys. So uh, let let's start it off with with maybe some Alabama talk. As as we all three uh, graduated from the university, uh, Charles a little bit longer ago than than us <laughs> young folk. Um, Charles, you you I think you have our recap on the uh, Mason Rudolph Invitational, the final the final tournament for Alabama before they get into the SEC tournament uh, play. What 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 do you got for us on that? Yeah, you know, it was a great job by the Alabama golf team kind of battling back, did not have a, a good first day, was uh, around the 10th place spot. But they finished the the weekend uh, in third, only behind Vanderbilt, who it was their home course. They shot a 30 under as a team, which was very impressive. Uh, and then Ole Miss, who finished 12 under for, for the weekend, too, they're also number five nationally in the country based off of the, the golf week coaches poll. So I, I, Coach Sewell, I think, mentioned in his comments that they they put a schedule together that they really wanted to test themselves and, and get ready for postseason. And they've definitely done that. Um, and they'll, they'll be tested as they get ready for the SEC championship in a few weeks. I was looking at the coaches poll and you've got, uh, I believe it's 10 – total teams that at least are receiving votes and you've got at least five, including Alabama that are in the top 10, um, Auburn, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Tennessee have, have all been really, really good golf teams this year. And I was fortunate enough to go watch the SEC match play hosted by former Alabama golfer, Jerry Pate. Uh, and it's really impressive. The talent all of those guys have. Um, I think somebody mentioned that of the top 40 players amateur uh, in the college level 25 are in the southeastern conference uh, and one of those who's no longer with us on the team is nick dunlap now playing professionally after being the first amateur to, to win a tournament and i can't remember how many years it was 20 25 30 years but you know getting back to this team um one of the things that coach sewell said in his comments um, was that he he hoped they learned some lessons from this weekend. And they have in the past couple couple times out, have not had a very good first day, but have really battled back uh, to get themselves in contention. Um, I think Thomas Ponder had a, a great weekend, finishing two under with the top five finish. Um, we know what Cannon can do. Cannon's been a you know the heartbeat and soul, I feel like, of the team this year. He's been been a great leader um, from what I can tell. So just as as you get ready for the SEC tournament play, um, you, they had won the Linger Longer Invitational. I think that's back-to-back -back years they've won that. But they'd also played in, in the Hyatt Collegiate Invitational um, where they finished second uh, with a one over and, and finished second only to North Carolina, who was three under for the tournament. Um, and, and North Carolina is considered the best, you know, golf team right now in, in college. So um, – I think it's a team that's got to have a lot, a lot of confidence. And while, you know, who knows how SEC tournament play will, will shape out just because there is such good competition within the SEC, as coach said, that they're, they're really positioned. Well, I think just for the NCAAs and as we talk about in basketball, you just got to give yourself an opportunity. And that's what these guys have done um, and, and done too that, you know, obviously losing your your best player, Nick Dunlap, as you get into spring season w was tough. That I would say they're all very excited for him. and um, But that that definitely, you know, somebody's got to step up, and those guys have stepped up and continue to compete well. So excited to see what they have ahead of them as we get through the rest of this college golf season. Yeah, and I would say for, for Alabama, it's, it's such an interesting situation where, like, you're excited for Nick to to go be, you know, accomplish his dreams and go be a professional golfer. But, you know, you had to feel like Alabama potentially had a real opportunity to to make some really big national noise with, you know, the U.S. amateur being in Tuscaloosa. Um, and fortunately, not unfortunately, he went out and won a PGA event as an amateur Um and went pro. And so for this team to be able to kind of rebound and 
capitalize on coming together as a as a unit and and playing well. And I've played a uh, fun fact about the linger longer invitational. I've played that course before. My aunt and uncle um, live in uh, live near Lake Oconee, which is um, where that course is. It's it's a fun course, uh, pretty challenging, but um, but for them to go out and win that, I think they got up to sixth nationally um, after that event. I'm not sure what they finished at this season as far as rankings is concerned, but for them to come back and accomplish that without arguably the best college golfer in the country is just a testament to one coach Sewell and then to the type of leadership and uh, talent that the Alabama men's golf team has on, on their team. Yeah. As like you team, said, I mean, sorry, go they're ahead, ninth right now. They're ninth right now in the nation and finished third behind two SEC schools, which like Charles was talking about there speaks to the strength of the SEC, but you have to, you have to imagine what Alabama might look like had they had Nick Dunlap, which, I mean, Ole Miss was 12 under, Vanderbilt was third under, and Alabama was even. But with Nick Dunlap, Alabama would be, I mean, Alabama would probably would have finished third right there anyway, but Alabama would be one of the strongest teams in the nation, stronger than they already are. But you got to be happy for him. He's obviously making his first Masters start this week, so it'll be it'll be cool to watch for him. Chris, I'm curious, since you've played that, you mentioned the the course uh, near Lake Oconee. Uh, Alabama was 40 under in that tournament, which is, you know, first day they were 21 under, really impressive. So if, if we gave you your first shot was on the green for three rounds, you know, so 54 holes, do you feel like you could putt out and, and be 40 under uh, by the end of those three rounds? How many holes is that? 54? 54 holes, two two putt, you know, on a par four gives you an eagle. I feel like I'm – so, fun fact, I talk about inconsistency. Putting is my most – my I'm very, very good putter. Um, most of the time I two putt uh, when I play. Um, I, do, I get three putts here and there. So, I, I'm pretty good at leaving myself an opportunity to two putt almost every single hole. Um, I feel like I could – I feel like I could – probably get to i don't know what like 25 26 under maybe maybe not 40 40s 40 seems like it's it's pushing it a little bit but uh <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty good putter if we if we made you have one shot from the fairway what what's your what's your club and what's your distance <laughs> that you want it to be uh it, it depends on the day sometimes it's my five iron sometimes it's my seven iron and again that also distance depends on the day Sometimes I hit my seven iron 160 yards. Sometimes I hit my seven iron 140 yards. So, um, but generally speaking, those two clubs, and that's the same with my five iron. Sometimes I hit that, you know, 165 yards. Sometimes I hit it 185, 190 yards. It just depends on whether or not I'm actually doing the proper things I need to do as far as a swing is concerned. Also turning my hips because I still don't do that. Um, as as Matthew likes to mention, uh, when I post swing swing clips, I don't move my feet at all. It's all in my <laughs> arms. But um, no, generally my five or seven iron, depending on depending on how how I'm doing during the day. I, I agree with the seven iron. I, as Roy McAvoy said, it's the the best club in the bag. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. My seven is probably my most consistent. I'm right about one seventy with it. My problem is I have a. I have a bad fade, so I have to start it pretty significantly left of the pin. But once I figure that out and have it consistently on a day, I can I can dial that seven in. Yeah, I... the, the comment about Roy McAvoy seemed to go over y'all's head. Are y'all too young to know that movie? Maybe I. I... Ten Cup. You've never seen Ten Cup. I've, I've seen. I've seen I've... Ten Cup. I've, I've seen, seen it, but you also have to remember I'm working on six hours of sleep over the last That's two true. days. That's so true. <laughs> um, it's it's been a it's been a long, long, uh, long, long weekend. Um, but no, I the the I so we talked about most you know cl clutch or most consistent club. What's your least consistent club in your bag, Matthew? You want to go first? I'll go first. Um... Two weeks ago, I would have said my driver. I just got a new driver. So my I think I had 12 of 14 fairways yesterday. So not my driver anymore. I would probably say full swing 50, 54 degree. I, I struggle to get the distance correct with my 50, 54 degree. 50, I usually sit about 120, 125. 
54 is like 105, 110. So I have somewhat of a gap there, which uh, can create some problems. But yeah, I'd probably say full swing 50, 54. If, yeah, those would be my two most inconsistent. Yeah, my 56 degree sand wedge, it's, I really have a hard time kind of gauging how far it's actually going to fly. And then, of course, you know, when I do feel like I have the right number, I just blade it or hit it right in the middle and it goes an extra 20 yards over over the green. And, of course, that's the club that I'm using out of the sand as well. And that's that's always an adventure. So if I can if I can play around without getting to my my sand wedge or the, the 56 degree, uh, it's it's a good day. I, I I feel pretty good with wedges in my hand, honestly, like I'm. I, again, uh, that's also relative. I'm not the best golfer. So like feeling good is like, oh, I put it on the green. Oh, we're good. Like that, that's fine for me. Um, if I can get on the green, I'm I'm happy. But my, I will tell you right now, and I don't know why, my most inconsistent club is my three hybrid. Ab without a doubt. Like, so I bought this brand, the brand new G435 uh, Ping three hybrid. And when I was hitting it in simulation or in the simulator, I was hitting it like really well. I was hitting like 220, like just dead straight. Perfect. I'm like, I need to buy this. Like this is going in the bag. It's replacing my 18 degree fairway iron or like hybrid iron that I have. Um, and I'm, I'm going to use it. I have yet to hit that, that on the course more than five feet. I'm I'm not even joking. I, I I've gone out and played, and the very first round I hit it like try to hit it five or six times. I think more mud got on the the club than actually like the ball moving. Um, and Sam, my wife, she says, "Why did you spend all of that money on that club? You can't even hit it." So <laughs> it, this sure is that a, feels good. <laughs> yeah, this is a brand new club too. Like brand new came out last year. I. <laughs> Man, I, I'm so mad because, like, I hit it well in the simulator, but I cannot hit that on the course at all. It's frustrating. You'll figure it out. You just got to <laughs> move the hips. That, well, that's, I, part the, that's part of the reason we started this, right? Because we're hoping some of the people we get on the future can give us some some tips and some instruction on how to play better. We're going to do live <laughs> golf course podcasts where we're going out <laughs> on the course with guests, and they're going to tell me how to play better. Um no, so I, this was all just a ploy to improve your golf game, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget. I went in a, I was in a, a work scramble this year, um, and I think we took two of my shots. One of the shots were a forty foot putt on eighteen because everyone put it in the sand, and I was the only one that put it on like the back edge of the the green. And then my boss steps up and drains a forty foot birdie putt off the green. And we finished like three under, but they kept making fun of me because anytime I would step up to hit, I would be like, man, that water's in danger. You better watch out if you're near that water. It's going in. And it, it always would go in the water every without a doubt. <laughs> like I could aim all the way to the right. It's going in the water. I could aim all the way to the left. It's still going in the water. That's why I had teammates for a scramble. <laughs> Christian, are you like me that it's a good day if I come home with more golf balls than I started with that day? I don't think that's ever happened to me. So gotcha. that's why I bring Sam actually is because she uh, she usually gets tired after like seven or eight holes. And then she just goes in the woods and starts finding golf balls for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, But yeah, that's that's us. That's our intro. That's uh, kind of where our golf games sit. Hopefully you know, throughout this podcast, we can go back and look at this. And, you know, while Tra Matthew Travis is trying to get, you know, a scratch golfer, if I could get under 90, that would be absolutely thrilled and probably quit golf the rest of my life. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, as we do these, hopefully we can go back and listen to these, you know, six months down the road and uh, maybe there's improvement there, or, you know, different things like that, that we can, we can kind of circle back on, uh, which it would be nice, but Let's move on to maybe the event, not maybe, the event of the week, my favorite week in sports, the Masters. Um, as you can tell, uh, I'm where I got this yesterday at Augusta. Um, and then Charles obviously is wearing his uh his his masters vest. Uh we need to get Matthew uh some some master stuff. I would have picked you something up if you uh if you would have told me, but 
I've um, been through Augusta. I haven't been to Augusta. So maybe one day. <laughs> I don't even know if you could count me going as going to Augusta because only 18 green and the driving range was open for people to, to view. Like the whole course wasn't open. Um, I don't know if you really count that, but I did get to go in the merch shop and I did get to try the, uh, the, the cheap food that we, we got, uh, that you get normally from Augusta. So that was nice. Yeah. Um, pimento sandwich. I don't like pimento cheese. So Sam had, Fair Sam enough. had one. She said, she said it was good. Not great. Which is might get some comments about that one. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the Masters. Uh, before we get into the actual week, uh, I, I would kind of want to talk about last week's tournament, um, mainly because Akshay won. Um, it was his technically his second win on tour, but because of the the rule that no longer exists, the same rule that kind of affected Will Zalatoris um, when he was coming in, um, he didn't get like FedEx Cup points and didn't get access or um, didn't get a invitation to like the masters and different the different majors because of some type of corn fairy rule which again i don't think that exists anymore um but i think he was the first male golfer to win the drive chip putt contest which is what i went to yesterday and then also get um an invitation to the masters talk about kind of him being 23 years old um has won two events at 23 um, and obviously is going back to a place where um, he captured a title in Augusta. Maybe it's not the same as playing in the Masters, but um, just kind of maybe talk about what, what you guys think as far as Akshay's game and then maybe the importance of him kind of capturing that victory yesterday. Yeah, I'll go first if you want me to, Charles. I mean, yeah. I'm 23 years old and I I haven't played on a PGA Tour event. So what he's doing is pretty pretty dang incredible. And like you said, being able to win the drive chip and putt and then be able to go back to Augusta as a competitor is unbelievable. And he, he had a phenomenal weekend finishing at 20 under and it was just him and Denny McCarthy. Rory had a phenomenal, phenomenal day on Sunday to kind of get in the mix, but it was kind of a two horse race and then the rest of them. But he had he had a phenomenal, phenomenal week. He was five under on Sunday to close it out, which Denny McCarthy had a great round on Sunday, going nine under sixty-three. But uh I mean, you gotta you gotta think the momentum might help him a little bit, but anytime you're making your first start at uh first start at the gusts, it's never gonna be easy. And he might get like we see a lot, he might get caught up in the moment a little bit, but it's it definitely helps that he's been there not to compete in the masters but to compete in the drive chip and putt and it'll be it'll definitely be a cool story to follow i feel like anytime i've I've watched an event this year his name has been near the top of the leaderboard um so he he's obviously got some confidence in in his game and knocking down that putt on 18 for birdie to send in the playoff um, to keep your wits about you because he he had been the leader and McCarthy, as you mentioned, had a great round on Sunday. So you got to think he's coming in with a lot of momentum to, to the masters. Um, he's a guy like, you know, the, the always looking for storylines or just really unique things. Like he's a guy that start getting the feeling like he's going to make the cut and be in contention potentially, on Sunday, is he is he good enough to win it? I, I don't know if he's there yet, but you can't. I mean, you can't take away what he's he's done. And there's, I think there's a lot of other guys too um, that have really you know talking about live and talking about PGA. You know, the one thing about the PGA uh, guys is you see a lot more guys who are playing really really good golf and are becoming household names uh, like Akshay. So. I think that's going to be exciting for them, and and hopefully that's exciting for us as fans, just to continue to be introduced to to new, you know, new golfers, new styles of the game, and stuff like that. And um, obviously, you know, people have got their different opinions about live PGA merger, or whatever it's going to be. But uh, I, it's it's uh, I'm excited for him with the momentum that he's got right now. He he's one of those guys that I'm definitely. I'm clicking the, the the favorites bar just to see how how he does and how he competes this weekend, um, and hopefully he makes the cut and continues to to play well into the weekend. 
So that said, Christian, do you do you think he has any shot to maybe be in contention this weekend at the Masters? Uh, it's tough. Um, Masters is difficult, and it's a it's a second shot course where um, the the penalty to put it in the rough or put it in the pine straw really isn't. It's it's a big deal, but it's not what makes the masters the masters what makes the masters so difficult is the greens um and being able to control your spin um understand the placement um it's why you don't see a lot of first time players do maybe particularly well is because maybe they don't truly understand like placement of the you know how to place your ball because you could put the ball you know pin high 10 feet past and it could roll off the green or roll into the uh, race Creek or, you know, different things like that. So understanding exactly where you need to put it. Sometimes that's, you know, put it on the, in the rough off the green and have it roll because there's so much uh, pace, you know, leading down to the hole. So do I think he can compete? I think he's a fantastic golfer and has a lot of talent, especially being again, like I said, 23 years old, winning two PGA events already. He's got into the PGA or got his PGA tour card because he won three corn Ferry tour events. So he's young, he's won a lot, um, and I think that for him to be successful, he, he's got to be, he has to understand where to place his ball and the, the kind of shot selection um, required. Um, I don't think he needs to be too aggressive, which he's not a, a player that is normally very aggressive. Um, case in point, on the playoff hole, he, you know, laid up, I, I know he had a shoulder injury, but um, laid up, didn't try to get aggressive, go after it. And then us, obviously Denny McCarthy uh, put one in the water and he had three or yeah, three putts to to win it. But um, I don't know if he'll be in contention. I think he has the talent to do it, but I, I personally think it'll probably take, you know, a couple of times playing Augusta to, to fully, to fully be that type of player, in my opinion. Talking about the uh, greens, that, that's something you don't really get a full appreciation of until you can be there in person and just see the different changes and slow. I, I remember when I went 2013 um, and just seeing the greens and, and how difficult they are. It's, it, there's a lot of things in sports that you can't really get an appreciation appreciation of until you see it. The Just the course in itself, you know, everybody wants to be there because of how beautiful and how you know pristine it is and but then you get to see those greens and it's, it's, it's quite a sight. I don't know if oh. you guys saw the video yesterday, but um, they pulled out the stint meter downhill. It rolled, rolled out 35 feet uphill, the same exact green, same line. It rolled four feet on the same exact putt on the stint meter. So that just kind of puts into perspective how just insane the greens are at Augusta. And with those pins, especially on Sunday, it makes them difficult to attack, but you have to attack them because if you're if you're at 40 feet, it's not going to be an easy putt. <laughs> and this isn't like a a great comparison, but I mean it is a comparison. I was again there yesterday, and I saw I I got to see 18, one, and I think 10 because they're all like right there next to each other, and so 18th green is where they were having the the putting for for the kids that were doing the drive chip putt i saw this one girl that was in second place um she had like a 30 foot uphill putt that she hit too hard and it rolled out 12 feet going uphill which is like i i watched that and i was like what the heck like i've never seen a uphill putt roll out that much like it went past the hole and rolled out 12 feet going uphill and I'm just sitting here and just like in awe because I've been to a Kiowa I've been to um East Lake I've been to the Wells Fargo um and then I, I I've obviously been to Augusta now and I don't think I've seen and they're they're tournament shape right now they might be need to be cut just a little bit more um throughout the week and they'll do that but they're essentially you know tournament conditions I've I've never seen greens move like that when um, while see, watching someone play, it's just it's just absurd. Um, and then additionally, you don't really get a full appreciation of elevation changes until you're actually there. the The tenth hole is literally straight downhill. You, you you don't see it on TV, but it was like it was like that. 
downhill. Someone told me there's 70 feet of elevation change only on the 10th hole. Um, and they said, um, when you go, the security tells you don't walk the 10th hole too much because it'll wear you out. And I looked at it and I was like, this, this is just absurd. Um, so, so I'll, uh, I'll ask you the same question. Charles asked you about, uh, the, the <laughs> lingen for yeah. what would it, where, where do you, how far from the hole do you have to, do you have to start in order to, in order to win? So we'll say, I'm going to guess the winner comes in at 12 under this week in order to get, be better than 12 under how far from the hole, I guess two in feet, not yards for you. Two feet, <laughs> a foot, <laughs> five feet. Those, if you, it, I, I think it would have to be like two and a half feet. I'm literally not joking. I still might not even be able to do it at that point. I, I, I don't know. I've, if, if, if you have a two foot putt on, on a par five, your your first shot, your that's four under on one hole, two feet. <laughs> I'm not joking. Two <laughs> feet for me to feel confident. Confident two feet. Probably I could probably get away with five feet, but anything. Yeah, I mean, because my thing is, you got you have a total of twenty par fives. So if you make let's say you make five of those putts, that's 20 under in those five putts right there. Look, I'd I, say, I, <laughs> you just got to make one. Five feet maybe then? Inside 10, <laughs> 10 feet? I don't know. You tell me. Not yeah. long. Not long is my... I, my... I, I think realistically, because I think the approach would be just trying to putt everywhere. So I think the approach, given that approach... Say you make a two on on half the par fives, that's three under on ten par fives, so that's thirty under right there. I would say realistically, for you, for you knowing your golf game, I think even even fifteen feet, I think fifteen to twenty feet, if you go with the approach of just two putting, you're gonna have some four putts, maybe some five putts given those <laughs> screens. But realistically, I think 15, 20 feet might be uh, attackable for you. It also would depend, am I pin high? Am I below the hole? Like, am That's I, true. like, I could be 15 feet, but I'm, you know, pin high. And if I miss it, I'm going off the green, right? Like, <laughs> it, it, it really p depends on, like, placement of, of the ball. And um, and that's on a whole-to-whole -whole basis, too, because it's just so, so different. So... Yeah. That um, definitely throws a wrench into it. How many times you put off the green where you got to put the putter in the bag and bring out a different club <laughs> to try to. That would be demoralizing, huh? Having to pull out the wedge when you started 15 <laughs> feet from the hole. Who was it? I think it was Tom Watson a couple of years ago. He like five putted from five feet. So it's tough even for yeah, them. It's, 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 that's why it makes the Masters the greatest event in the sport and one of the greatest sporting events, period, because it's just so impossibly tough well i think getting past thursday i think it's supposed to rain over there on thursday but then after that it's supposed to look really really nice which will be definitely a change from from last year's round on saturday um my parents were able to be out there and um that was a uh, i remember seeing the water just pooling up on the green that was a, a monsoon out there last year yeah so, made some made for some interesting golf last year it sure did yeah it made so, for some – I felt cold for the guys that were out there. Yeah. Like, and I was sitting in my house. I was like, this looks miserable and looks like they're freezing. And I think um, – was did Tiger withdraw after Saturday last year? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I remember watching his round. I was like, I don't know how this man's doing it. <laughs> I, I – I, and uh, there's been some stories about Tiger, but – um, as far as leading up to the to the Masters this year, but um, hopefully not only because I'm I'm a Tiger fan, but for the game of golf, hopefully he can make the cut and make it to Sunday. Because anytime Tiger's you know playing on Sunday, regardless if he's you know in the tournament or not, it's a, I feel like it it adds a little bit more juice to the uh, to the event. Yeah, I, that Sunday I, red shines brighter in Augusta. I saw I did get to see him in 2013 on Sunday. And I felt like I got a better appreciation of what the tiger effect actually is um, and how it can, uh, there was, 
when it, when it was really hot talking about players that would play with him and how much worse they would play. And I get it now because all the spectators are moving when you're in your back swing, trying to get ready for his next shot. Like, I, I, yeah, it's the the having to play against Tiger, but it's also you just you got things going on around you the entire time because people are there to watch him and get ready for that next shot. They don't care. They have zero qualms about that you're trying to out there go win a championship too. Yeah, it's something else. I've I've been fortunate enough to go to a couple majors at uh, Beth Page Black when I used to live in New York at uh, Pinehurst too when. Martin Keimer won the U.S. Open there, and then when Justin Thomas won the PGA Championship at Quail Hollow, because uh, Christian and I actually went to rival high schools in Charlotte, funny <laughs> enough. But, um, I mean, the Tiger effect, and I, I've been a Rory McIlroy fan forever, and uh, getting to follow him at the 2013 U.S. Open, he was popular, but he his popularity didn't reach what it was. So I was able to go, I was watch him one hole go, skip a hole, watch him there. And I did that for the entire day for the 2017 PGA Championship. That was just impossible because everyone wanted to see Rory McIlroy. On Sunday, I was just sat on 18 and I got to see Justin Thomas come up and finish off there, which was awesome. But I mean, that's Rory McIlroy, which obviously he's a, he has a massive following, probably the second biggest in the sport. But Tiger, the following is just unbelievable. And uh, so they did a piece earlier this week about his uh, 2019 Masters win and how I believe, yeah, Zach Johnson was watching the final round on his phone. He was while he was playing, his caddy pulled up the pulled up Tiger finishing off. And that while he was playing in the Masters, he was watching Tiger Woods play in the Masters and try and win his fifth jacket, which obviously he went on to do. But, I mean, that just talks to the the Tiger effect, as we talk about, which even his competitors who were trying to beat him are watching it. Tony Finau talked about how cool it was just to be part of that group. And it's something else, and it'll, it'll definitely be the same this week. Yeah, my... I, I think my tiger story is um, the I went to East Lake in 2018 on Sunday uh, with, you know, Luke Ratliff, who a lot of people know. Um, but that was when Tiger won the tour championship and we were there on Sunday. Um, and when I when I say it was a surreal experience, like that doesn't even describe the type of like atmosphere it was like you couldn't move on holes because there were so many people following tiger i mean I, I think we posted up on seven um because you could see seven and eight fairway right next to each other so basically you see them hit into the green on seven and then hit their first shot on eight right next to each other and we sat there we got to see like uh phil i think was there um obviously jt came through um but when tiger came through like you couldn't move and I mean, there's a video because uh, I have a video on my phone of Tiger being like 15 feet from us because you hit it in the rough. Um, and it's just lines and lines and lines of people. And then obviously you you saw on 18 where they basically just walked with Tiger to the green. Um, and players that played with him talked about that type of experience where like they didn't even think like it didn't even feel like they were playing anymore essentially like they, they were just spectators at that point like couldn't get to their ball um it it was it was just absolutely wild I again I was I've been fortunate enough um I've kind of picked my spots as far as what what events I've gone to so I've I've seen Tiger win a major I've seen Phil win in Kiowa um at the PGA I saw Rory win at the Wells Fargo um for the first time in like years um a few years ago um, I saw, I think last year I saw Wyndham Clark win the Wells Fargo. Um, and then uh, there was, there was another one. Oh, I saw Rory win the PGA at Kiowa, I think it was, um, like when I was in like 2012 or something, 2013, I can't remember exactly. So, mm -hmm. um, been very fortunate, but there like, that's such a, it was such a surreal experience to, to kind of witness a, a Tiger Woods you know, PGA Tour win, especially one of that magnitude in 2018, which was his first one um, since, I think, what, 2013, I believe, 2014. So um, that's a, I feel like, a, I feel like we kind of went on a tangent there with Tiger Woods, but uh, let, let's get back into Tiger's event. 
which is the Masters. Um, <laughs> the the greatest spectacle in sport, in my opinion. Um, March Madness comes, you know, close second, but um, that this is the this is the week. This is the event um, that people that don't watch golf watch because it's it's that big, um, and it means so much. Um, obviously, with the live golf stuff with people coming back in such as dj brooks kepka phil mickelson um you know guys like that coming into to play and they only play the the major events and a lot of the time like last year for example you didn't really know how those live golfers were going to come in and look uh going into the event and obviously now with like rom going there uh he won the ma the masters last year um, but Kepka did a really good job. I think Phil will finish second, I believe, last year. And then obviously Kep or uh, Dustin Johnson, who who always does well at the Masters, um, it seems, uh, is coming in. And then additionally, you have guys like we talked about Akshay. Uh, I think Nick Dunlap's in a great story as far as, um, you know, what he's bringing to the Masters. And then you have guys like Scotty, like who's already won the Masters. He's He's been playing out of his mind. I think he won back-to-back -back tournaments this year. He's probably playing the best golf of his career in my opinion the only other time would probably be two years ago when he was won like what six tournaments in the first like two months of the year something like that um but who do you guys like in this who do you you know tell me some storylines you like um and ultimately who do you who do you think is your favorite to to win the masters this week well, favorite wise, it's hard to say anyone other than Scotty. Like you said, I mean, he put a new putter in his bag and it's definitely worked as of late. And um, I mean, it's pretty much Scotty versus the field. But my my big thing, as I mentioned, I'm a Rory Rory fan. It would be awesome to see him finally get over the hump, get his first major win in what feels like forever. But John Rahm is a reigning champion. I believe there's only been three repeat champions, obviously Tiger and Jack but I believe Nick Faldo repeated. Um, so I believe there's only three repeat champions, which him being the fourth would be crazy in doing one, obviously as a PGA Tour member, doing the other as a member of Liv. Um, but Brooks, he had a meltdown on Sunday last year. I think Brooks, which I, I know I'm just naming the top guys, but um, it, I, I think Brooks definitely has a shot if he figured it out last year um at the pga at the us open and sunday i mean sunday at the masters was just an epic meltdown him behind patrick cantley and dealing with that pace of play turned out to be a detriment but i think tommy fleetwood is also a guy to watch i th I, I like tommy's chances he's not near the top but i think he's been playing decent golf lately and i think he can definitely be in the be in the mix come sunday as well yeah, I think, it, you know, outside of the uh, – well, Roy McIlroy is clearly a, a Class A player. And does he get to complete the the Grand Slam of majors, uh, which has been talked about for years? Does he get to exercise those demons from when he had the lead and just blew up on the, the back nine on Sunday? So um, that's obviously going to be talked about a lot with him. Another guy I think about who's, who's starting to play good golf is Ricky Fowler. Um, you know, does he finally get over the hump and be one of those guys who, you know, gets a major or is he on the path like Lee Westwood, who, you know, phenomenal golfer, had a great career, but could just never get over the hump and, and win a major. And then, you know, guys like Akshay and I, I even think about a guy like um, Eric Van Ruin, who I feel like I you see on the leaderboards almost every week to start the year. Um, Sahith Tagala is a guy who I'm very interested in watching because he's another guy who's played really good golf. Um, I remember, you know, the first time watching him and in, in the waste management, may, uh, that might have been two years ago. Um, you know, while that tournament is not the Masters, we we all saw on Twitter the scenes of what that tournament can be. Um, and and while he didn't pull it out, like he's a guy who's playing with the best. Um, obviously it's a different animal as we just talked about with, with the putting and all that, but I, I can't, I think he's going to be able to keep his emotions in check if he was there and, and have some confidence within himself. Um, and then I, I think about Jordan Spieth too. Uh, Jordan's been phenomenal at the masters over the years. Is he a guy that, you know, similar as we just talked about tigers tournament, has this become, you know, Jordan's tournament. And while 
at times he he hasn't been great or it's really been up and down. Like he seemed to play very, very well and actually and has a couple green jackets. So, you know, those are the guys that I don't know if they can win. Um, I, I, and I don't know if I'm picking them to win, but I, those are the storylines that I'm interested in. Those guys I'm interested in seeing as far as, you know, especially those, those I'll call them class B guys who are kind of not carrying the PGA tour, but are playing in all these events and you see them every week you know, with the whole live stuff and with the the figureheads for the PGA that are getting all the he headlines are these guys that are playing every week and playing really good golf. Does it translate into a major event like this where they get start getting a lot of name recognition too, outside of just every week where they they're playing in a Valero or something like that, that not many people watch or just, you know, check the scoreboard or, or the leaderboard at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, for me, I, I would talk about, I don't even know why I didn't even mention these guys, but like Hideki Matsuyama, um, Sergio Garcia, you know, these guys that have won the Masters who Hideki's had a phenomenal record, you know, at Augusta. Um, obviously, obviously Sergio is uh, phenomenal again at Augusta. Um, those are guys that are always pretty consistent as far as um, when they get to Augusta. And I think the more you play, the more consistent you become. Obviously, that that would make sense. But um for for me, I think guys like Victor Hovland can Victor Hovland kind of I I think Victor is bound at, so, at some point Victor's bound to kind of you know get through the finishes that he's had. He he's been more consistent as he's played more and more. I think um, for last year he sorry I'm pulling up his bio. Last year he finished tied seventh. Um, he he's had round or his total score has been. 285 in 2019, 288, 2021, 292, and then he drops to 282. And I think he's playing probably some of the best golf of his career um, and probably could be one of those guys. Another kind of maybe off the wall is Ludwig Ar Ar Arberg. I think that's how you say his name. Um, he's going to be a rookie at the Masters, but even last week, I think he finished top 10, I believe, in um, – the what was it the Vale it was it the Vale is that the Valero, the Valero. yeah yeah um and he's played pretty pretty good golf um maybe he he's a guy that can maybe make some noise that might be off the wall a little bit um obviously Jason Day um and then I had one more guy I'm again I'm looking through the field right now as you look for him going back to Ludwig real quick what's his comfort level coming off the tee you know is he playing with the new driver since. <laughs> He had that shot on 17 where he, the the club head just came flying off. <laughs> yeah, just snapped right in half. He he was a name I wanted to mention because, I mean, we all kind of got to know him last year at the Ryder Cup, obviously helping Europe. But he, he's he been, like Christian mentioned there, he's been playing phenomenal golf, and but we'll have to see if uh, his driver is I intact. <laughs> yeah. Well, these guys get new clubs every single week. They, I mean, they have, they have, <laughs> that must they be have, nice. yeah, they literally have got like a, a club truck that's out at the tournament that the guy will be like, Hey, I, I don't like this loft or I don't like this driver head. And then they go and get them a new driver head. So I would expect them to at least have, <laughs> have the yeah, but huh. have some options. Yeah. His past, I believe six tournaments, he's the farmers. He was ninth. 18, the Pebble Beach, he was second. Genesis, he was 19th. Arnold Palmer, he was 25th. Players, he was eighth. And last week at Valero, he was 14th. So he's been playing phenomenal golf, like you mentioned. And, yeah, he, he definitely should. But like we've talked about already, w does the inexperience at Augusta, how does that play? He's probably getting there today to really get to know the golf course and try and get prepared. But he's definitely a name I would think would be – up there just because of how good he's been playing lately and truly how good of a golfer he is as a whole. I, he's near the top and uh, he, yeah, he's 12th in shots gained tw total and 15th in shots gained off the tee. So he's definitely, definitely a name I would keep my eye on. And speaking about Augusta and experience, how much do you guys think a caddy that's been at Augusta plays as a factor into like these younger guys. So like Ludwig, for example, how much do you think his caddy may, I don't know if he's, you know, caddied Augusta before has knowledge, but if he does, 
how much do you think that plays into the success of, um, you know, either winning the Masters or, you know, maybe finishing top 20? I, I mean, go. you want to go, Charles? <laughs> you go first, Matthew. Um, I mean, it definitely plays a part. Caddies can, like we talked about, the greens are just so unbelievably tough, which obviously any course you play on the PGA Tour is going to be tough, but Augusta brings that to another level, and they can help you with that, kind of help with, like you mentioned, 10 being so downhill, what the right club is to hit there, and stuff of that nature. It definitely helps. Does it win or lose you a golf tournament? It could, but I think nine times out of 10, it probably won't, which, I mean, that's the case with Justin Thomas right now and trying to uh, get his comfort level with a new caddy as well as he goes into the Masters. So that could play a part there. But I think definitely for the rookies, their first time at Augusta, it definitely plays a factor in knowing the golf course, if they've been there before with a, with a different golfer, if they have tips and tricks that they've picked up on. But I think at this point, the golfers are so close with with each other that I think they're not really hiding anything unless, I mean, live PGA, they might. But as we've seen, that's kind of played up by the media a little bit. But I think at this point, the golfers are so close. If there's a tip or a trick that has helped them at Augusta, I think they're not shy in sharing that information, which I think that can go a long way too. But caddies, they definitely help. I don't, Will it win or lose you a golf tournament? I'm not 100% there. Yeah, as soon as you mentioned caddies, I, it's kind of can't believe I'd forgotten about Justin splitting with Bones coming into the Masters. And obviously, you know, with our focus on Alabama, we we all, you know, whenever Justin's playing, he's a guy that we all root for and we all want to see be very successful. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, as far as if his new caddy has been announced yet. I, I had not seen anything yet about that um but i speaking of justin specifically like you know he's coming off of a year where he would talk about it it wasn't what he wanted it to be so if this is a split that he felt like he needs to to be more comfortable in the course like then then by all means go for it um and obviously you know it could be if he doesn't play well this weekend it's probably something that that could be questioned by the media by by whomever um but that 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 was definitely the a, a shock, I think, to to a lot of people, especially coming into the Masters, that this split what was announced. But hopefully, it works out for Justin, and we're getting to to watch him over the weekend as well. So you know, I w- it would be doing a disservice if I didn't somehow segue into Justin Thomas splitting his caddy. So <laughs> that's why I uh, I mentioned it. It looks like um, he's. It says he'll have Matt. Minister, former caddy of Patrick Cantlay, uh, on the bag is ahead of his. So first... is he going to be playing really slow? Is that what I'm hearing? Maybe. <laughs> I think so. As far as the Justin Thomas caddy situation, I don't think it was Justin Thomas saying, "Hey, I want you to leave Bones." I think it was more Bones probably saying, "Hey, I probably want to get back into broadcasting." Um, and from that perspective, Justin hasn't really performed very well, uh, like we've thought as far as off the tee. His putting's been atrocious. Um, I really thought that he was turning it around at the beginning of the season when he was finishing like top 10, almost every single, every single tournament. And then for whatever reason, his, again, his putting has fallen off a cliff and now it it seems like he's a little scrambling a little bit, but, um, it's interesting that Patrick Cantlay's caddy is going to be his, because I don't, I don't think the issue with Justin is that he needs to think more. I think the issue with Justin is he needs to think less. Um, when he was playing his best, it was when he maybe didn't have as much experience on tour or much as much course knowledge and obviously a lot less pressure, um, and he could just go out and play golf. Um, my memory for Justin, or my biggest memory for Justin is in the Open where he hit that three wood, you know, to 10 feet with spin. Um, obviously, he didn't end up winning that tournament, but like just doing like the the these high risk things being able to showcase his talent and just going after it instead of you know methodically thinking through some of the stuff like he's done with like aim point like he's i i feel like he's kind of overthinking a lot of his golf game right now which is causing him to make more mistakes and so getting a a caddy that it caddied for probably the most you know methodical thought out person on tour i don't know how successful that's going to be but you know 
maybe maybe this is the year he breaks through. I don't I, I don't I don't think it is, especially with how he's been, you know, short game has been, but you know, it's the masters. You never know what kind of storylines you're gonna you're gonna get uh as you go and go throughout the week. So um, talking about talking about overthinking, that reminds me of that clip of uh Jordan Spieth earlier this year where he you know blew the four footer and you hear him talking about in the grain, this and that. And you know, they got Kevin Kisner on the broadcast. It's four feet, Jordan, just put it in the back of the hole. And, and then, like, I, I think all of us, you know, uh, definitely I, I know, and again, not a great golfer, but how shots just like get in your head and compound and stuff like that. I, I like, I want to take my time when I'm putting and line it up, but, but ironically, sometimes I, I feel like I play better when I just get up and hit it instead of just lining up. And that's not like just get over it and go. That is to have like some sense of like how, how it's going to break, what the speed is going to be. Um, but I even see that in myself sometimes like, man, just, just play. Don't, don't overthink it necessarily. And the best time I putt is when I take a, a, my putter and use one hand and just hit the ball. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally not joking. I could be 30 feet from the hole just take my putter, hit it with one hand. It's like a foot from the hole. And I could do you the same try thing. The you should try the claw grip. If that's the case, it would kind of a more guided uh, more guided one hand pretty much. All right, so let's go back. If you putt with one on, on these master <laughs> green. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe I do need to try that. But I, I, I literally can just take one hand, just hit it. And I generally hit it pretty close to the hole almost every single time. Um, so, so with the masters comes fantasy golf and, uh, masters fantasy, uh, for those of you interested, maybe we do a, um, maybe we do a masters fantasy like group, uh, might be an idea. Um, uh, I think that, uh, we're going to introduce, uh, something new for this podcast, or I guess everything's new because this is a new podcast, but, um, new relative to what we've been doing as far as crimson crossover is concerned where we're going to do, um, fantasy picks each week. So Matthew, do you kind of want to explain what, what that's going to look like and uh, how we're going to do our picks? Of course. So us being a, a, a Bama golf podcast, obviously everything we do, we want to have some aspect of Alabama in there. So what we're going to do, we have a five round uh, fantasy snake draft. We're going to do it every week. So we'll pick an order here in a second or unless one of them has it. So say I'm picking first this week, I'll pick third next week and so on and so on. And we'll keep track of it. But um, we all, if there are three Alabama golfers in the field, at least we have to all pick at least one of them. So this week for the Masters, there are three, Justin Thomas, Nick Dunlap, and Lee Hodges. So no issues there. We'll all pick an Alabama golfer. That'll be the first round. And then after that, the, uh, the second, third, fourth, fifth rounds, will be whatever golfers we want to pick. And the point system is, uh, so if if one of your golfers win, it's 25 points. A top five finish is 15. Top 10 is 10. Top 20 is five. And a missed cut is negative five. We're going to double that for each Alabama golfer. And there's no penalty for an Alabama golfer missing the cut. So you definitely, Justin Thomas is going to be a hot commodity. Nick Dunlap will be a hot commodity. And those good Alabama golfers, because... If you can get an Alabama golfer to win, that's 50 points, which is equal to two non-Alabama golfers winning uh, at any point. So it's some, something fun that we can track throughout the season and um, maybe have uh, those watching. They can We can have a Twitter poll with who had the best fantasy draft, stuff like that. Some Something where uh, for those watching, those listening, you can in interact with us and um, – something like that maybe we can find something out like christian was saying for the fans where we can get you guys involved too but something fun that we can definitely keep track of throughout the season and maybe uh as charles said maybe have an event at the end of the year based on where we finished in a like a tour championship style something based on where we finished yeah maybe we'll do like handicapped round of golf where I get 40 strokes because uh, <laughs> it's going to be needed. And then in addition, I get another 20 strokes because I'll win the, win the fantasy. So there I get 60 go. strokes total. <laughs> um, so uh, with doing that, I'm going to do a, a random number generator, um, you know, on Google. 
So just based off of who I'm looking at, so Matthew is going to be one, I'm going to be two, Charles, you're going to be three, and whichever number one through three comes up on my computer, um, that'll be the first pick. And then we'll just go like in order. So like if Matthew goes first, then I would pick second, Charles, you pick third, yep. um, like that. Yep. So the number is three. So Charles, you go first, which is what uh, you wanted. So that's what I wanted. <laughs> um, I, I feel honored and very excited to, uh, have Nick Dunlap is not only my first choice, but the first choice of this podcast. Uh, one, I, I hope Nick has a great week in the Masters, but Nick Nick's one of those guys watching him in the amateur um, and watching that with my youngest son, Wilson, like actually got me back into golf, seeing the excitement that he had watching somebody play and just watching him play. And like, I know I'm never going to play like Nick Dunlap, but that was just really <laughs> cool to see a guy from Alabama compete on such a high stage like that um and i'll share it so as i mentioned was able to go out to sec match play this year at birmingham and actually took wilson who was three at the time to go watch uh to go watch nick i mean as soon as we stepped on the course his first question is where's nick so we went and tracked him down um he was playing uh the par three eighth and we were able to sit near the the ninth tee box um, as he was hitting on uh, to the eighth, uh, and I think he birdied that hole. And, you know, as, as he came up to the tee box and got close to to Wilson, his eyes got big. And me being, you know, the dad of a three-year-old for, for golf, like all I'm concerned about is don't yell, don't scream, don't run after, don't talk in their backswing. You know, you know, when he starts going back, don't yell, go Nick or anything like that. So we had talked a lot about whispering and being quiet. Um, Nick has the honors, the tee box at the ninth, he gets up there and he hits a great drive down, down the middle uh, as he typically does. But what I found funny is, uh, you know, there's a, there's a different sound when the golf ball hits a club for, for these guys <laughs> and he hit it and Wilson's right next to me and I'm kneeled down to him and literally it, he hits it second of silence. And then I hear this, wow, just, whoa. So that was that was cool. So I'm honored to to get to select Nick as my my first selection in our in our fantasy. And I think so we're gonna do me or it's you. it'd be it'd be you, Matthew. But I think just okay. for everyone, uh, we're gonna do Bama golfers as our first round picks every single week, um, just so people can get that. So I think I know where Matthew's gonna go with his pick. Uh, which yeah, I, I don't know think he, there's much much decision making here. I'll stick you with Lee Hodges. I'll take Justin Thomas. No, <laughs> no disrespect to Lee Hodges, but it's his first master start, and Justin Thomas obviously has experience there, and I think has a real shot. Probably his best shot as of late. If he, the the problem obviously is going to the question rather is going to be is he comfortable with his new caddy and uh, kind of what that dynamic is going to be, but. Um, his caddy, like you said, was with Cantley, I believe, last year. So if that's the case, I mean, he was in the final couple groups with uh with Patrick Cantley last year. So yeah, I'm gonna go Justin Thomas. I think that's the uh the obvious pick for me there. Hey, Lee finished tied for twelfth in the Arnold Palmer this year. So uh, there you go. Maybe maybe he's uh he's the guy that's gonna do it. Uh, 2023, he finished tied for twelfth in the Memorial in the Scottish Open. Um, so you know maybe maybe it's a a course that uh favors him and you know we'll, we'll ride with lee but that means that i get the the real first pick which means i'm going scotty shuffler so um that's that i i can't go against the world number one right now so yeah i mean uh his odds are just astronomical but that that's he he is it's like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much Scotty versus the field. So you get, you get a nice pick there, but um, I've talked about it. Rory's my favorite, him and Justin Thomas are, and obviously all the other Alabama golfers, but I've always been a Rory guy. So I'm when at Wells Fargo, I've, uh, he almost hit me with the ball at Wells Fargo at the Quail Hollow. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Rory. Hopefully he can get over the hump, finish the career, uh, the career grand slam. Uh, I'm gonna go with John Rom. I know, as you mentioned, you know, maybe not feeling that he'll win this week just because it's so rare to have back-to-back -back winners, but a guy that continues to play really, really good golf. Um, obviously, there's a lot on his plate literally this year since he's putting together the the champions dinner. 
Um, but a guy that I do expect to to make the win the weekend and hopefully be in contention. So I'll go with John Rahm and then I believe I'd go again, correct? So um I'm I'm gonna go with Jordan Spieth. I, I talked about how you know he's been successful at the Masters. It just feels like it's it's a weekend where he could be in contention. So I, I'll go with Spieth. Well, I was hoping he would fall to me in the second or in the third round, and he did. I'm gonna go Brooks Kepka. He was phenomenal last year. Every major, he seems to be uh, near the top, and uh, he's talked about kind of how Liv has helped him kind of keep his mind at ease and not being forced to um force but not be not having to play as many tournaments and um obviously he won a major last year almost won three last year so um yeah i'm gonna go brooks i think i gotta go dj Uh, his record at the masters is you know really really good i i i think it would be a disservice for for uh us not to or you know not to pick dj as long as 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 well as like Brooks Kepka, both of those guys on live. But um, as you saw last year, live golfers perform pretty well in the majors. Um, obviously they got John Rahm again this year. So I got to go DJ. Are we doing five or four golfers? Five, five, so okay. four, four, non Alabama. Well, okay. some weeks it might be, we might have five non Alabama golfers, depending on how many yeah. golfers are in the field. So my next pick's Victor Hovland. I've already talked to him about him on the podcast. I think I think maybe this is a year that he breaks through. Maybe he doesn't win, but I think top 10 um is definitely within the realm of possibility for him. Um so that would mean that I have Lee Hodges, Scotty Scheffler. Um right now you have Lee Hodges, Scotty Scheffler, Dustin Johnson, and Victor Hovland. So I have one more, right? Or no, I'm I'm not yeah, picking right now, yeah. but I have one more person. Okay. Correct. Yeah, you so have those one are, more. This is, I think, where it gets tough. I, I, I like Ludwig. I like Patrick. I like, like I mentioned earlier, I like Tommy, Tommy Fleetwood. But, I mean, if he's available, I'm gonna go Xander Shoffley. I think I, I like how he's been playing. He has a, he has a history of competing in the majors, competing at the Masters. So, um, yeah, I'll go Xander here. Uh, I'm gonna go Ricky. Uh, he's gonna be a guy that I, I want to watch. He's a guy that. You know, got close last year in, in the U.S. Open. Um, I think he's got a lot of confidence in the game. It's kind of a rebirth in his in his game as well, uh, as far as playing better. He got the the win last year too. So I'm I'm very interested to see what Ricky does, and I, I think he'll be another guy um, that should make the cut and should be able to be playing on the weekend. Um, and then for my last pick, I am actually going to go with Sepp Straka. Um, while we are, you know, a University of Alabama, you know, golf podcast and want to support those guys, um, Sepp actually has a lot of ties to the state of Alabama as well. Um, he's a guy that I'd like to support. He's a guy that I'm going to be interested in watching. Um, that he's, you know, we, we, we rattled off all those names of guys we thought we could compete, could compete and Sepp never, never came up. So, uh, I want I want Sepp in my my five some this week uh, and see if he can earn some points for my my fantasy team. A lot of names you can go off here, um, but I mentioned him earlier. I think I'm going to go Tommy Fleetwood. I like how he played in the in the three finishing majors last year. He didn't have a great showing at the at the Masters, but he made the cut, which means I wouldn't get negative points. So uh, I think I'm going to go Tommy here and. That means if he wants, Christian has a – he could get a guy who, who might be wearing red on Sunday. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to pick Tiger. Uh, I would love <laughs> to pick Tiger, but I, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I think the guy that I'm going to pick is Hideki Matsuyama. Um, reason for that is he's only missed one cut, I believe, at the Masters. Um, his last – you know, since 2017, 2017, he finished tied for 11th, 2018, he was 19th, 2019, he was tied for 32nd, tied for 13th, he won in 2021, tied for 14th, tied for 16th. So he's a guy that's only missed one cut at the Masters. Um, he's generally pretty consistent. Um, and his golf game has been really good the last few weeks. So I, I think I got to go Hideki. Um, you know, I, I, I just think that that's a, a, strategic play to make sure that I I do have another guy that I, I think will make the cut, especially since, you know, I love Lee Hodges, but 
I need to make sure that I get guys that make the cut. And I don't know if, if Lee's going to be one of those guys, hopefully he is, but um, that I, I think Hideki is going to be the play for me. Awesome. And we'll make a graphic that uh, right now will have all three of our teams, but I, I wrote them down if you guys want me to read off the teams, but we'll also have one with, uh, with the rules and everything. So those listening, those watching can follow along, but um, so here are the teams, Charles being with you, you have Nick Dunlap as your Alabama golfer. You have John Rahm, Jordan Spieth, Ricky Fowler, and Sepp Straka. I have Justin Thomas as my Alabama golfer. I have Rory McIlroy, Brooks Kepka, Xander Shoffley, and Tommy Fleetwood. And Christian, you have Lee Hodges as your Alabama golfer, Scotty Scheffler, Dustin Johnson, Victor Hopland, and Hideki Matsuyama. I think those are three pretty pretty dang strong teams. I, I like the teams. I do. I'd... Go ahead, Charles. No, I was just uh, I like the teams. It's going to uh you know, it's going to be a fun competition this year and you know, make sure I I get my my putting down for whatever competition we uh, finish the season off with as well, but uh it's a it's a good you know, like we said, first episode, it's not a bad way to start with your first fantasy picks being around the the Masters too. That's yeah. Great. Um yeah, I I I'm excited, guys. I mean, I I I am so excited for this week. I I literally start watching the Masters on like tomorrow. I'll start watching practice mm -hmm. rounds. I do it at work. Just you know, sit there, just watch it, and uh, I'm gonna be glued Here's to the, the quiz. TV. Have you guys downloaded the Masters app yet? Uh, did you did delete? Did you delete the Masters <laughs> app? Is the real question. It stays on my phone. Um, That's a, that is a good question. Fair enough, <laughs> uh, Christian. I know you mentioned you're not a big pimento cheese fan, and I'm not either. So when I get home Sunday from church with the boys. Uh, past two years, we have cooked up just grilled cheese sandwiches with some bacon in there as well. And then definitely getting, you know, lemonade and tea and making some Arnold Palmers to to watch the Sunday round with. So uh, curious if y'all have any special traditions yourself that you've put together for, for not only just Sunday, but Masters Week as a whole, other than just wearing Masters gear or something like that. I don't, but I might have to. I might have to take the grilled cheese from you idea from you. I like that because <laughs> I'm I'm not a big I'm Christian might know this. I'm probably the biggest the pickiest eater you'll ever come across. So uh, not a big pimento cheese guy. I've had it before. I I can deal with it, but I might have to take the grilled cheese idea from you. <laughs> so that'll be our second competition because I know I'll have a lot of family members and friends that listen to this podcast. And as soon as you just said, as you're the most pickiest eater, they will all raise their hand and say, oh, no, 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 you've not met Charles. So we will have our golf end of year competition and we may have a picky pickier eater competition at the end of the year as well. Maybe we do, because uh, I don't like pimento cheese either. Maybe we do the loser of the fantasy golf uh, challenge has to eat p a pimento cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> now you really think, well, we, we, we can go food for food, what we don't eat. But uh, yeah, it's it's up there. <laughs> but uh, this has been the the first episode, I think, of uh, something that that really excites all three of us as far as just being able to talk, talk golf. Uh, I've... I've like I said, now that basketball is over, and not like I wasn't following golf, but while basketball was going on, but um, while basketball is over, this this kind of allows us to one continue to make content for you guys in the off season, um, while most likely like the Crimson Crossover podcast is probably going to be a little bit slower, um, probably not going to have weekly episodes on that, but um, allows us to continue to provide content for Alabama fans and hopefully you know just PGA Tour fans um, as well. While we'll talk about Alabama golf, the 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 point of this podcast is just to talk about golf in general, um, with a little bit of uh, Alabama thrown in there, um, just because of our kind of affiliation toward the university, um, and our expectation is to have these out weekly, um, just for for everyone listening. Um, I think the plan is to have it out on Wednesdays before tournaments. Um, in addition to uh, the three of us talking, uh, we'll have hopefully. Um, former Alabama golfers, people associated with the state of Alabama. We have some stuff potentially lined up. Um, current Alabama golfers, maybe guys like Jay Sewell. Um, and I think our eventual goal is to somehow get Justin Thomas on the podcast. So um, <laughs> I don't know how that'll work, but, um, but especially with it being major season um, and him going through a caddy change, it might be difficult. But um, 
you know, we're, we're, we're just looking to provide you guys more, more entertainment, more content that you guys can consume. So, you know, if you guys have any questions, any comments, uh, be sure to follow our, our Twitter account, which I think is what milk uh, underscore mi no moles, yeah. moles underscore milk underscore golf. Yeah. Um, so that's our, that's our Twitter account handle. As far as where you can find this, uh, we're going to continue to, we're going to upload these on the Crimson Crossover YouTube channel um, as essentially what Crimson Crossover, Crimson Crossover, the brand is going to become is Crimson Crossover Podcast Network. Um, we have a podcast uh, being built right now for Alabama baseball, if you're interested in that. I'm in talks with people on doing an Alabama softball podcast as well. Um, I'm not sure about a football podcast because there's hundreds of them out there um, to be able to consume. Um, and I really don't want to be a redundant type of, you know, sourced information that you can go find at, you know, a hundred different places. So um, that'll be up on the YouTube channel. And then additionally, we'll start a podcast on Apple and Spotify. That'll specifically be, you know, the Mulligans and Milkshakes podcast um, so that you guys can go and follow that. Um, and then obviously follow our account. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to mention as far as, uh, maybe things to, I guess, I, I like to call it, uh, housekeeping, um, as far as the, the podcast is concerned. Now, hopefully we're sitting here drinking a milkshake and one of us, uh, gets 50 points on come Sunday, but yeah, maybe next week we'll be sitting here drinking milkshakes early in the morning. Like Charles is this week. That's right. Yeah. I, uh, look, support yay, Alabama support uh swinging elephants like Kristen said we want to talk about golf in general but um we do want to support the Alabama golf team they you know making a run here into the SEC tournament and NCAA tournament in the next couple of weeks um if you don't already support those programs I know they'd appreciate their your support as well and it's a great time for Alabama golf in general with so many guys playing on the professional level that you know, you can watch somebody almost every week that's competing competing for a PGA Tour event. So good luck to, to all those guys this week and in future weeks and just excited to be able to, to try to showcase that program, but also showcase how bad we are at golf as well, except for Matthew, who's <laughs> almost a scratch golfer. Well, I said, I said, because Matthew's like, well, you know, in six months, we'll be able to build this out and then we can be like, good, good. As far as a podcast <laughs> is concerned, I said we're more like Bob does sports, where I'm Joey Cold Cuts, Math Matthews uh, Fat Perez, not because of weight or anything like that. Just Taking shots of, at me already, huh? Just, it's episode one. <laughs> just because of, just because of his golf game, and then I guess Charles that leaves you with Bob. So, um, I, I well, even though technically Bob's the worst golfer, so I would be Bob, but Joey's left-handed, so I I guess I have to I hit I hit the ball on the wrong side of the of the tee box, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this, uh, excited to to do this with you guys. And, um, you know, hopefully this is something that people enjoy. And um, I also need to mention, uh, I can't stop the podcast without mentioning J&J &J Apparel, who's going to be our apparel sponsor for all things Alabama, our Crimson Crossover Podcast Network. Uh, obviously, we're not wearing J and or I think Charles is wearing J&J &J underneath uh, his yeah, I got, vest. Yeah, I got the real tag. Yep. Yep. Um, I have my final four shirt coming in somewhere. <laughs> well, we have to, we'll, we'll get you the hookup with some J and J stuff, uh, Matthew. So don't worry about that. But um, J and J is our apparel partner for all of our Crimson Crossover uh, podcasts that we're going to be doing um, with J and J. They have golf polos. Um, they might be coming out with some, some more stuff down the pipeline here soon. So stay tuned on that. Um, and maybe we do, you know, master's, the master's fantasy where we build that out for, for people on, on the master's app. And I'll talk to them about potentially doing like a J and J bundle giveaway for a winner. Maybe we do something like that. So um, please go shop J and J uh, they're in Tuscaloosa and also online. Um, and I think with that, I think we're good to wrap it up. So uh, we'll talk again soon. And I guess I have to end it with the roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs>